Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Resolve. I know that's not what I usually say, but in today's episode, I'd like to take a look at DaVinci Resolve. While Reaper does have video editing capabilities, there are some things that it's currently not able to do. My quest for finding the perfect non-linear video editor for me led me to DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is made by Blackmagic Design, and there is a free as well as a paid version available. The primary differences between the free and the paid version is that the paid version better takes advantage of hardware acceleration and has some additional features added to the Neural Engine and the Effects Library. I've had a few people ask how I create the thumbnail photos for my YouTube videos. Today I'd like to show you how I create these pictures in DaVinci Resolve. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is from one of my recent videos where I show how to enhance your drum sound using stock plugins in Reaper. If you're not familiar with Resolve, it has multiple pages that have the different tools that are available. The media page for importing and organizing the media for the current project. The cut page for quickly chopping up footage and preparing to edit. The edit page for more detailed editing. The fusion page for compositing and effects. The color page for color grading. The audio page for mixing and sound effects. And finally, the delivery page for exporting your clips to the desired format. I primarily work in the edit page for creating the videos that you see on YouTube. But when it's time to make my cover photos, I use Fusion. It's a bit of an unorthodox use for this application because this is made for creating and editing video, but I find that it can also be used as a powerful graphics editor. To get started, I'll need to create a new timeline. I don't want to alter anything that's on my current timeline because this is a finished project. So I'll go to my media pool, to the master bin, and create a new timeline. I'll call this cover photo. And this gives me a blank timeline with the settings that I've already got for this project, which is 1080p, 24 frames per second. My usual cover photo involves a freeze frame from the OBS capture of Reaper, and also a freeze frame from the cover footage of myself. I usually start by taking a look at the OBS footage and scrubbing through the timeline just to find something that might catch my attention. Anywhere in this area could be fine. Now instead of dragging this entire thing down to my timeline, I like to set an in and an out point of maybe a few frames. I'll press I on my keyboard to set the in point, and just find some random position and press the letter O to mark my out point. What the in and out points do is tell Resolve that this is the part that I want to focus on when I drag it to the timeline. Now I don't need any of the audio from this, so you can see as I mouse over the video, I get a couple of icons that pop up below. The left side is if I want to insert the video only, and the right side is as if I want to insert the audio only. I'll left click and drag from the video only part and drag that down to my timeline. The length of this doesn't really matter so much since I'll end up just creating a photo from it anyways. As I look through my footage here, this appears to already be frozen in time, but had I pulled a bit more footage that had some movement, I would want to find a part and create a freeze frame. But again, since there's no motion in this clip, there's no need to do that this time. Now let's take a look at my camera footage. I'll do the same procedure and look through the timeline and find something that I think might make a nice freeze frame. You can never go wrong with a coffee cup shot. I'll do the same thing and select an endpoint and an out point, and I'll usually choose a larger section here just to make sure that I've got something that has a bit less movement and blur, and I'll grab the video only and put that on top of the OBS clip. Now I'll need to scrub through here and find the perfect freeze frame. That's good enough right there. Now to create the freeze frame, I'll need to make sure that my camera layer is highlighted and then choose my inspector. The inspector allows you to change properties of the currently selected clip and I'll go down to the speed change section and click this snowflake icon to create a freeze frame. That splits the currently selected clip where the playhead is and you can see this clock icon shows that this frame is now frozen. I'll delete the preceding section and now I can move this back to the beginning of the timeline. I usually like for my clips to be the same so I'll go ahead and just create a split here and trim both of these to the same spot. I realize I'm skipping a lot of the keyboard shortcuts as I go through this and if you'd like to know more about Resolve feel free to leave a comment below. Now that I've got my two clips, I can convert this to a fusion clip to start editing. I'll left click and draw a box around both clips, and then right click and choose new fusion clip. In creating a fusion clip, I've merged my two clips together. Now you can currently only see the OBS layer and not my camera, but that's where we go into fusion to do more editing. With this clip selected, I'll now click the fusion icon in the toolbar. Now fusion can quickly get confusing because instead of the layers, we now have nodes. The easiest way to think about these nodes is a bit of a flowchart. And in its simplest form, one set of instructions feeds the next set of instructions. I'll try to go through this quickly and just give you a little bit of an idea as to what you can do in here. Needless to say, there's a lot more that can be done in Fusion than what I'm doing for this example. I'll start by identifying my media end nodes. A media end node simply tells Resolve that this is a piece of media that I want to insert into the timeline. You can see at the end I have a media out node, and the media out node is what shows in the timeline. 
the viewers that I have up at the top can be changed to show any of the nodes that I'd like. For example, in Viewer 2, I've currently got Media Out showing. I'd like to find out for sure what Media In 1 and Media In 2 are and label those. I'll select Media In 1 and press 1 on my keyboard to send that to Viewer Number 1. I can see that that's OBS, so I'll hit F2 to rename this node and call it OBS. That'll just help me to better identify what these are. Now Media N2 should be myself, but I'll check it just to be sure, and send that to Viewer 1, and that most definitely is me. I'll rename that as well and call that Mike. Now I accidentally hit 2, so I want to go back over to my Media Out 1 and send that to Viewer 2. Here we have a Merge node, which simply tells Resolve to merge these two images. This node has different colored triangles on it, as well as a white square. If I mouse over each of these, Resolve will tell me what they're for. The white square is the output, and that output is going to Media Out 1. The orange triangle is the background, which tells us that OBS is on the background. The green triangle is the foreground, and that tells us that the mic footage is now in the foreground. And the blue triangle is for masking. You can create shapes to mask out an image and show only what's under that mask, or you can invert the mask. There's lots of different things that you can do with masking, and we'll get more into that in just a bit. One thing that may be a bit confusing about this layout is that the vertical orientation of these nodes does not matter. I can move OBS below or above Mike, and it still stays in the same place because all that matters is which triangle it's piped into, and it is in the background, which is exactly what we want. You can rearrange these in any way that you'd like if it helps you to better visualize what's going on. Typically on my thumbnail photos, I have myself cut out from the background. In order to do that, we can create a mask and draw an outline around myself to mask myself out. I'll do that with a polygon node. I can left click and drag and create a polygon node on the lower area which is called the flow. Now currently this polygon node is doing nothing because I don't have it piped into the mask input. What I typically like to do at this point is to highlight my polygon node and start to draw into my number one viewer which is currently set to show Mike. I'll move this around and just start somewhere along the bottom and start to draw. Now the more points that you have the better your mask will be. And this also works like a pen tool in vector graphics applications, so if you're good at using the curves, you can do that same sort of thing here. I generally just tend to zoom in a bit and add several points closely following the outline of myself as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, I usually end up adding a bit of a soft edge to it to help mask any imperfections. And there will be plenty. I'm using middle click on my mouse to grab this picture and move it around a bit. And I'm just left clicking along the edge to add these points as I go. Once I get outside the frame, I can left click that first point to complete the loop. And once that loop is complete, I can pipe my polygon node into the mask input of Mike. And that has cut away the background and now I can see myself superimposed over OBS. Now if I click away from my polygon node, that makes those lines disappear and I can see a bit of a harsh edge around the cut. I can refine that in a few different ways. I typically like to click on my polygon node and bring up the inspector in order to add some soft edge to it. Turn that up just a little bit and see how that looks. And it looks like I'm going to need to edit my mask a bit. So I'll click on the polygon node and maybe zoom in a bit just to bring some of these points in. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I do like to try to get these a little bit closer. And you can see as I pull these nodes in, little bits of red from my chair start to disappear, and that's what I'm looking to do. Now if you find that you need more space when you're doing this, you can click this button in the top right to switch back to a single viewer. And we're back to where we started here. Let's zoom back out and take a look. A little bit better, that'll work for now. Now I'd like to fix a little bit of the color on my face there. I can do that by adding a color corrector node and I'll do that by clicking on mic and pressing control space to bring up my tool search and just look for the word color. Then I'll add a color corrector node and by clicking this, it'll add it next in line after mic. There we've got the color corrector and we can go to the inspector with the color corrector selected. And this allows us to change the, the colors of the image, hue and saturation. We can also adjust contrast, gain, lift, gamma, and brightness. I'll reset this. 
And I think what I'd like to do is just lower the contrast a bit. And you'll notice as I start to lower the contrast, it's also affecting things that are outside of myself. This can be corrected by going to Options and placing a check mark on Predivide Post Multiply. That'll help isolate it to just what's visible on that, on that layer. Now I can start to adjust these colors until I get it about the way that I like. There we go, with the reduced brightness and a little bit of reduced contrast, that looks a bit better to me. Now I'd like to better place myself. I can do this by either adding a transform node after mic, or my preferred method is by adjusting the merge node. Thinking again about this as a flow chart, I would like for all of this to move and not just myself. So if I use the merge node to make my movements, anything else that I add in line between myself and the merge node will stay moved to that same position. So I'll click my merge node, and with the inspector open, I can either adjust the center X and Y values, or I can grab this tool in the viewer to move myself. We've got myself moved over to the right a bit, and that looks better. Now at this point, I think I might like to add a bit of a border around the outside edge. The process for doing this is not quite as intuitive as you might think, at least not at first. I'll start by adding a background node, and for the time being, I'll just place this somewhere randomly in the flow, and let's get our second viewer back on screen. I'll get these both back in the center of the frame. And now we need to decide what color we want the background to be. I'll put my background in viewer one, and let's make it some semblance of purple. Now I need this background to sit between the OBS layer and myself. So in order to do that, first I'll need to remove OBS from the merge node, and I want to merge my background on top of OBS. I can do that by dragging the output of the background to the output of OBS, and that will automatically create a merge node. And now I can take the merged copies and pipe that into the other merge node. And all we have is this purple background. Now we've only got the purple background because this background layer is sitting on top of OBS. Now we need to create a mask on top of the background to carve out the area that we want visible. I'll drag a rectangle mask onto the flow and pipe that into the background. And now we've got the purple, but not exactly the way that we want it. I can correct that by inverting my mask. And now I've got OBS visible in the center, but a bit of a wide background. We can adjust the width and height of the background node to change that. And that looks pretty good. Now we need to add some text to show what we're talking about in this video. That's done with a text node. I'll drag a text node onto the flow and I'd like for that to sit on top of all of these elements. I'll pipe the output of the text node into the output of the merge that combines the background with the picture of myself, and that'll create another merge node and set my text on top. Now we currently can't see anything because there is no text. I'll open the inspector tab with the text node selected and type in some text. I can choose a font, and you have many of the same tools that you would have in a word processor. I'll set my horizontal anchor to the left, and you can see that that just means that my point of transform will be the left edge. Now I can take this and drag it wherever I'd like. And I usually like to add a drop shadow as well. We can do this in a couple of different ways. We can actually add a drop shadow effect to this, but the text node also has a shading tab across the top. Now here under shading elements, we have an option to select elements, and these are essentially presets. They can all be changed to whatever you'd like, but preset number three is a shadow. I can enable that, and of course I can, as I said, change any of these parameters to be whatever I'd like, but using the default shadow option tends to work out pretty well. Typically I just reduce the opacity a little bit and leave it at that. Now if I'd like, I can add multiple lines here, but I tend to use another text node for different things. That way I can control whether they sit on top of each other or give them different fonts as well. I'll add one more text node and pipe that into the previous merge output. Now these nodes can be renamed, so I can click the first one, just call it huge because that's the first word in that statement. And in my second node, I can give that a name as well. These names don't really matter, it's just to help you to identify what each node does. I'll add some text. Choose a font. Give it a drop shadow like we did the first node. And let's move this somewhere. 
Now at any point I can go back and change the sizing on these or any of the other parameters. We can give these different colors, different sizes, different fonts. And finally I'd like to add a Reaper logo. I've got one in my media pool so I'll go and grab that and just drag it onto the flow. I'll rename this so we know what it is and pipe that into the output of my last merge node. Now this is a bit big, so I'll go into the merge node and change the size of it. And move it where I'd like. Now in this case, I think I'd like for the Reaper logo to sit just a little bit behind these. In order to do that, I can disconnect it from this merge node and completely remove merge 5 from the flow. And now let's pipe the output of Reaper into merge 1. Now you can see that this has piped this around. We can move these over if we'd like and place them wherever we'd like. But as we said before, the physical orientation of these nodes doesn't matter so much as what it's piped into. You can see that our shield has gone back up to a larger size and that's because we removed the previous merge node. So I'll need to resize this again and, and move this wherever I'd like. There, that looks pretty good. Let's go back to our edit page full screen this and see what it looks like. Now that soft edge on me looks a little bit extreme, but it'll work. Now how to export this as a JPEG to use for my thumbnail. I'll do that in the color page. You would think that you would do that on the deliver page, but the deliver page is for exporting videos. So if I go into my color page, I'm not going to do any actual color grading here, but I will right click this image and choose grab still, and that takes a shot. Now I can right click the shot in the gallery and export, save this in the desired folder, change my file format to JPEG, and give it a name. And that's it. I know that that seems like an awful lot of steps, but as you can tell, DaVinci Resolve has some powerful tools and features to help you make not only great videos, but also great pictures. If you'd like to see a bit more content on DaVinci Resolve, drop a comment below. And if you enjoy the content you've been seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the buy me a coffee, I like coffee, or Patreon link below. Also check the link in the description to join us on Discord. We'll see you next time. It's a weird video, you're talking about Resolve instead of Reaper, you're drinking tea instead of coffee. What next? Gonna start using Pro Tools? Pro Tools.